Bobblehead Homestead. I am Jeff. Today is Sunday. It's about 75 with a nice breeze and sunny right now. Uh, forecast calls for it to be 82. I have been up and at them and busy this morning. Let's take a look. Doing some preparations. Hey Bob, do you have supervisor uh, duties today? You're the toughest one of the three. Grumpy doesn't care. He's just like, do whatever, I'm going to go do my own thing. So Grumpy's like the best. And Fifi, she sleeps most of the time. But you, Bob, you're the hardest supervisor I got. Take it easy on us today. First up this morning, I had to take down some electric fence. So I got that one, and then I had to take that one down a little bit. So what I am hoping to do today is start building a chicken coop right there right in between those two trees right in between that coop and this coop and these dudes are getting locked up all day so that's just how it goes so uh yeah i had to move the fencing and then i had to do some weed eating and i've still got to clean some of those branches out because those get in the way but that was on the agenda for this morning how are we doing everybody i know i don't usually lock y'all up and you probably can't see them through the chicken wire. Can I get closer? Yeah. Um, I've got three of my third generation olive agar uh, cockerels in here. And then I have uh, production brown egg layers and those three that I got at the auction. I blended them in with this flock and they all look alike. So that was my theory. They all look alike so they'll get along. And that seems to be the case. So. All is good. I've also got a couple little olive acres there in the back. I like that lavender one. So yeah, they're getting locked up all day and then they're getting some new neighbors. Bob, you you forgot to remind me. We've got a helper coming today. It's a local teenager and uh, earning a little bit of extra money helping me out. And so he hasn't... Uh, done any work for me before we'll see how it goes I've, I've met him uh, many times nice young man and uh, I don't know if we will be filming while we're working so it is what it is right Bob take it easy on him it's his first day here I've got my tools ready to go for the first step putting in some screws and uh, uh, the fencing staples for the cattle panels and then I think I've got the rest of my rest of my tools for today ready to go not bad for two hours of work we got the uh, the four boards that make up the bottom frame and we got the four corner braces in and we got the door frame uh, posts there and the braces in the back and uh, well and the cattle panels up and so yeah, two hours of help. I have no, that would have taken me three days by myself. <laughs> um, and then we'll see, he might be coming back tomorrow after school. Uh, then we can start on the chicken wire and the door and uh, the tarp. And then that's, yeah, not a whole lot left. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with the progress on this chicken coop. And uh, Hopefully we can get more progress done tomorrow night and then we'll start working on the next chicken coop. 
I forgot to open this box on my last video, so I'm doing it now. Uh, it's big and heavy, so that's probably why I forgot. Uh, but that is a box of hardware cloth. Uh, quarter inch, 23 gauge, 36 inch by 50 feet. So yes, definitely hard. It's a little bit different than the stuff on the left. Well, I've got one. Let's go take a look. I used the same hardware cloth on this little brooder. I haven't finished it yet because I'm... To be quite honest, I'm afraid of cutting that metal. <laughs> I want somebody here when I'm cutting the metal. Um, man, uh, it can wait. Uh, but yeah, th this is the same stuff I used on there. And uh, let's see, if you're doing a 4 foot by 8 foot, well then you need 24 feet to go around it. So one roll of 50 feet would do uh, two of these brooders. And I would like two more of these brooders. I probably better finish this one first, but... Yes, thank you so much for that hardware cloth. It is an essential item if you've got more than 200 chickens on a homestead. Something else I meant to show you in my last video but I forgot about because it, I, it was already in use is um, this is from West Michigan Pasta and Provisions. Yeah, 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 good stuff. This is from Part-Time Permies. I'll put a link up there and uh, another one down in the description. They ran a special where you got eight of these for a good deal. And so I got eight of these for a good deal. And they made it an even better deal. They put a little bit uh, extra in my order because they are wonderful people. Uh, Mike and Cindy and Part-Time Permie number three. I already put a link up there. But yeah, they've got a channel. Mike is a... Uh, is a chef and go to their website go to their website um, this is made with USDA USDA organic uh, semolina so this is organic pasta they make it by hand um, you know and he's a trained chef and I splurged a little bit on this you know normally I get the cheapo stuff but I figure I don't go out to eat I never go out to eat I don't even go to fast food restaurants unless Drew twists my arm um, and so uh, I like supporting people that are putting out good products and they're good people and it's a local small family business and so I do not mind uh, splurging once in a while so yeah I got an eight pack of, and it comes they come in all kinds of different ones this is the Gramigna I like that shape that was pretty cool and then you got uh, rigatoni and this one I'm really excited about doing with uh, one of my chickens. Those, you know, dumpling, dumpling egg noodles. So I think uh, a lot of these pair with my homegrown chickens pretty well. I can make my own gourmet meal at home, so to speak. But I've already gone through uh, two of these and they're just delicious. Uh, let's see, the last one I had, they have a pinette, which is uh, tri-colored. It's and flavored spinach I don't remember spinach garlic herb and the other one might be tomato spinach tomato and garlic pepper yummy 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 um, but oh it was wonderful they, they were just it's just wonderful pasta so if you're in the market uh, it's bagged very well they had sent me some way back when I first got here and I didn't have a kitchen for a while so um, it sat in these packages for over a year until I cooked it. I could not tell a difference. So this stores very, very well. Um, it's a, a great alternative to going out to a fancy restaurant if you want to make a, a very nice pasta dish at home. Uh, you know, I would definitely recommend West Michigan Pasta and Provisions. They do farmers markets and local events. They sell fresh pasta. If you're up in the Kalamazoo, Michigan area, uh, yeah, you can go get fresh pasta. And they also do extras like pasta sauce and stuff like that once in a while. Man, I, lived in, I wish I lived in Kalamazoo. I actually did look at, uh, I was looking for properties for sale. I never made it up there to actually look. But that was another area other than Arkansas that I was thinking about was Kalamazoo. It's not that far from Chicago. I know a lot of folks uh, still up in Chicago. So, anyway, 
If you're in Kalamazoo, or if you want to order online, I'll put a link to their channel and to their website below. And that concludes today's program from Bobblehead Homestead on this Sunday afternoon in late September. Yeah, it was over 80. Uh, it was, yeah, I worked up a sweat, that is for sure. Uh, long day for me, pretty much. But uh, getting that chicken coop, uh, good start on chicken coop. Very, very happy with that. Uh, thank you to the young man who came to help. Hopefully he can... Uh, can do that and uh, get some more stuff around here. Yeah, I'm tired. So with that, thank you for making Bobblehead Homestead possible. Thank you for helping me and uh, thank you for helping the young man who was able to help me today. Oh, what a wonderful world it can be when people are kind. Thanks for watching. Take her easy, everybody.